Hello, I'm Ronan Chris Murphy from Recording Bootcamp, and uh, I want to turn you on to a fun drum mixing technique. You know, we all wish we had the option of, you know, when we want to get that Bonham drum sound to have a big room to work with, room mics and things like that. But there's two things. One is there's not really a Bonham drum sound. Zeppelin records have all sorts of cool drum sounds, but when people say Bonham drum sound. They usually mean that roomy, kind of pillowy sound that you get on like cashmere when the levee breaks and things like that. And a uh, little plug here, I did a book for charity called Audio Recording Bootcamp and there's a whole chapter just about that issue and the John Bonham drum sound. But number two here, the reality is we don't all get to have giant rooms to work in all the time or lots and lots of mics. So I want to show you a really easy, fun mixing trick where we can use just close mics on a drum set, just a few close mics in a kind of small room to get us a little bit closer to that big Bonham drum sound we sometimes like to go for. So here, check this out. Alright, here we go. We are in Pro Tools now, and uh, this is a drum set with just four microphones. There's no processing of any sort on them. Uh, you'll notice I do have a limiter over here, but that's just to kind of push the levels up. So if you're watching this on a laptop or something later, uh, the audio comes across a little bit better. But um, this is from a record I did for a great uh, artist named Dave Nachmanoff, the album Step Up, which is awesome and you should buy it. But uh, And the drummer is Victor Bassetti. So we cut this in a, in a studio, my previous studio, where the drums are in what actually used to be a living room in a house that got rezoned commercial. So let me just play you the four tracks. And just so you know, here are all the pieces individually. Here's our kick. And our snare. And our overhead. And I've got the snare down, because actually with three mics, you can get pretty kick-ass drum sounds. So here's ju just the three mics. So that's pretty rocking. We'll just put a little bit of snare in. And uh, if your drums don't sound that good, well, you should come to Recording Boot Camp. I'll show you how to do it with three mics. It's actually pretty easy once you sort of uh, know how to do it and avoid a lot of the common pitfalls. But anyway, the reason we're here is we're trying to um, say that we've got this close thing, and we've recorded it this way, and for creative reasons, we want to give it more of that sort of classic big room bottom kind of sound. Um, the big thing too is, uh, if I knew in advance we were going for that, I probably would have moved the microphones back a little bit. Uh, I also probably would have let the kick drum be a little bit looser and have a little less impact. But we're talking about mixing right now. So there's a couple things you can do. I mean, one fun thing you can do is you can just pull up, uh, you know, we'll just pull up and smash the overheads with a uh, um, compressor. Yeah, let's really go for some smash. And that's starting to get kind of neat, but again, that's not really that Bonham-esque sound. Like extreme compression can do really cool, fun things for drums, but the thing about that Bonham-esque sound, again, is combination of the compression and the room. So there's a technique that I like to use, uh, which involves a few plugins that luckily aren't that expensive. And the big secret is this one. It is the Transient Designer from SPL. Um, there's a, I use these a ton. I used to have the hardware in my rack, but I found the plugins to be so close and sometimes even better. So what we're going to do here is actually uh, play around with this, mostly the sustain, but some of the attack. So you hear how we're starting to bring up a lot of the ambience. That's actually really, really cool. But the thing about distant room mics, we don't get immediate close impact as much 
sound softens, transients soften over distance. So what we'll do now is actually pull down the attack. So you'll notice two things. One is you're starting to hear a whole bunch of sort of pumping and wobbly stuff, but also notice how those hi-hats are just still like cutting right through, you know, almost taking your head off. So we're gonna do a couple things. One, let's just move this plug in down a little bit. Um, one of the first things I'm gonna do in this situation is, and actually let's go ahead and do this now. I was gonna save it for later, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna duplicate this track. So let's duplicate our overhead. And uh, I'm not gonna use our plugins on the second one. So what this is gonna allow us to do is just completely smash and obliterate uh, this process track and then leave this other one dry and then we can blend them however we like. But one of the first things is again, uh, transient soften, but also high frequency generally softens. So uh, that, uh, that hi-hat is gonna kill us. So we're just gonna go use a simple EQ. We'll just go and use the free one here that came with Pro Tools and do the low pass filter. Again, remember the fancy one name for the thing that cuts off the high end. There, that smoothed it out a whole, whole bunch. But we still got this situation where it's sort of pumping and wobbling in a way that's not really idea for this, ideal for this sound we're going for. So let's just pull up another, let's pull up a real simple plugin. There's one I like a bunch. Uh, do we have it on there? So actually I was gonna pull up the Massey, but, uh, uh, which is on the studio computer, but we're doing this on my laptop. But any good compressor will do. And the thing we wanna do is really fast attack. We wanna get the faster attack to again, bring in a little bit more of that hi-hat and kind of a medium release. And what we're trying to do here with this is not only bring down a little bit more of that hi-hat, but also, again, listen to the pumping that's happening here from the transient designer. So it's a real neat effect, but it's not that big natural room. So what we're gonna try and do here is uh, pull up this compressor and see what we can get away with, with smashing this thing. Now, let's see, da, da, da. I'm gonna go ratio pretty high. And that hi-hat is still too aggressive, so I'm gonna pull that. And I think what I'm gonna do is find that spot where the hi-hat is really cutting through and just try and pull that down. And important to remember, I'm doing all this subtractive EQ before it goes and hits our dynamic processor. There we go. Ugh. Now this is starting to sound pretty good. So here's what we started with. So, and we're gonna just blend that in in a parallel way. Always important whenever you're doing this parallel stuff, make sure you've got delay compensation on or you will have phase nightmares with this stuff. So anyway, let's try and go back and just gradually pull this in. We're gonna put on our, our main dry kit and then just start pulling in our process track. There you go. So it's starting to come together. Uh, and the thing that's still, there's two things keeping this from being more that classic Bonham sound. One is, you'll notice, that hi-hat is still just way, way too forward uh, for that kind of sound. So we might actually just go in and go really bling and use the free EQ that came with the DAW. 
and just try and find where that hi-hat's coming really forward. Ugh, there we go. And we're just gonna pull a bunch of that down. Yeah, that's gonna work. So let's hear um, with and without this EQ that we just did. I think we can even get that a little better. There we go. So, uh, all of a sudden, we've been able to turn this into this. So a couple other things. If you've gone for a really, ended up with a very modern style kick, this one's pretty close, but there's still a little bit too much of a hard attack on it. And that classic bottom sound does not have a big hard attack. So we're gonna, we've got two options here. One is a lot of that smack for this kind of thing is gonna come be right around 4K. So we could do a little subtractive EQ. You'll notice I'm a huge fan of subtractive EQ on drums. But we can also pull up our friend the transient designer again and just reduce the attack a little bit. There. So let's see, hear this with and without the transient designer. It just softens it up, gives it a little bit more of that classic bottom esque sound. And we're, because of getting things right in the overheads, we're not having to do a lot, but we may also want to do a similar thing. Uh, if you find that you need to push up the snare for groove and impact, but you're not getting uh, quite that sound, again, we can do the same, same trick right here. Soften that up. You want to be a little bit careful about pushing too much sustain on the drums. That can get really fun, but listen how it affects, brings our hi-hats forward. And also, when you bring out the sustain on drums too much, it's actually gonna start to really fight vocals and things like that. So, here we go. So we'll do a quick, uh, we started with this, without this trick. Very good, and I actually think it really suits the record uh, we made, but here it is back in. So that'll do it. Again, there's things that we could get into and play with it. It's all about making sure it suits the song. Again, one thing that is the forwardness of those hi-hats is just part and parcel of it. And um, if I really wanted to push that more, I'd determine that in context of the song. But um, I might start looking at something like a, uh, a dynamic EQ or multiband compressor. That'll bring those down and still get us a cool overhead. So that's it. And I uh, hope this was a little bit helpful. Thanks for checking this out. Uh, if you want to learn more, go to recordingbootcamp.com. We've got all sorts of videos, including tons and tons of free stuff and also information about the various recording bootcamp courses we do around the world.